Okay, welcome back. This is biology class, and I am Mr. Kowalski. Uh, welcome back to protein synthesis. We've been talking about unit six. Last time we were together, we talked about transcription, which was making RNA from DNA, which means it took place in the nucleus. We learned the three types of RNA, and we learned uh, how RNA and DNA are different. Uh, we learned that transcription was the first part of the process of protein synthesis, which, in other words, we we're going from DNA code to making a protein, but there's some steps involved. One was transcription. The other one is translation, which is what we're going to be talking about today. Now, normally, I have three key questions that you need to be able to answer. Instead, today, I'm going to have some main ideas. Like, these are things you need to know and need to be able to explain by the time you're done uh, <clears throat> watching this video today. So, you need to be able to understand and talk about the steps of translation. Okay, there's four distinct steps that I need you to know. There need to know the roles of the different types of RNA involved. Okay, it has a lot to do with their names, but I need you to know like how they work together. And then I need to make sure that you know how to use a codon chart. If you could do those three things by the end of this, you'll be golden. Okay, so what exactly is translation? Well, translation where is exactly what it says. The word translation just means like changing a language, which is what we're doing here. We're changing from the language of AUs, Gs, and Cs to a language that we can actually use. Uh, which would be uh, amino acids, which actually will make a protein then. Okay, so we're going from RNA to protein. We're going to require all of the three types of RNA. Messenger RNA to carry the code, transfer to bring the building blocks, and RNA to make the ribosomes, which will be the places that we actually make the protein. So, step one, mRNA. mRNA, we remember from last time, it left the nucleus after receiving the DNA code. Okay, And you, you know this is RNA because it's single-stranded and it has uracil. Now this code, this mRNA code, is going to be read in triplets, uh, otherwise known as codons. So groups of three nucleotides on the mRNA are known as codons. So on this one, there's six codons. There's AUG, CCG, UUG, ACA, AGG, and UGA. Those are the codons of this mRNA. So there's six codons. Each codon then is going to be a code for a specific type of amino acid. Now there's 22 different amino acids that occur and then with the order that we put these different amino acids into is going to determine the function of our protein. We'll talk more about that at the end. Okay, But in order to figure out which uh, amino acid is coded for we need to use something called a codon chart. And there's different types. There's a big square one which we used to use back in the day and now you'll see a lot more of these ones and this is one we're going to use in class, the circular one. You'll see that there's four circles the inner, the second, the third, and then the fourth one on the outside. Okay, The first three circles have letters, and then the outside has these crazy words like alanine and leucine and proline. Okay, So what you do, you're given a codon. Let's say our codon is AUC. We start in the middle of the codon chart with the first letter. So A, I find the A. Put my finger on the A. There it is. Okay, Next, we move to the second circle with our second letter. Our second letter is U, so I move down here. And then obviously the third letter would be our third circle, which would be the C. So AUC makes this amino acid, which is known as isoleucine. Okay? Now let's try a couple more just to make sure we know how to do this. GCG, so GCG would be alanine. Okay? UUU, UUU, and then U makes phenylalanine. CAU, CAU would make histidine. Not, not, done, not to be confused with histamines, this is something different. And then the last one. UGG makes tryptophan, which is an amino acid found in Turkey that makes you sleepy after eating it. Uh, kind of appropriate since next week is Thanksgiving. But back to translation. We're on to step two. Step two, we're finally going to use our friend the ribosome. If you remember from unit three, we learned that the ribosomes make protein. They're little factories, okay? So the mRNA is actually going to attach to the ribosome. Now, if you watch this animation again, the ribosome has two parts. There's the large subunit and the small subunit, okay? So those two parts are literally going to slide together with the mRNA. So if this was my ribosome, okay? We have something called the P site and the A site, okay? The, that would be the active site, which would be what the A stands for. And the mRNA is literally going to slide into that mRNA. It's going to fit down in there if I can make it work, okay? And then we're going to read the mRNA three codons at a time. Now the first codon, the place where we start, is always called the start codon, and it's always the same three letters, AUG, which codes for the amino acid methionine, but sometimes it's referred to as start. Okay, So step three, now that we're there, we're going to involve our friend the transfer RNA. Now the transfer RNA, if you look at my tRNA, there's two things about him that are unique. One, he's got an amino acid at the top that he carries, and then at the bottom you'll see he has bases. 
Those bases are known as anticodons, and they match up with their complements to the codon. So the codon AUG, the anticodon then would be UAC. And again, it also brings that amino acid. So what's going to happen is that tRNA is going to carry that amino acid to the ribosome, and it's going to match up the bases. Once it's matched up, the ribosome is going to slide down. It's going to read another set of three, and it's going to bring in another uh, transfer RNA with a different amino acid. And now remember, the amino acid is determined by this anticodon, or excuse me, by this codon right here. And then the anticodon then is its match. Now, after this happens, we slide down a third time. Okay, but now we're getting to the point where we're going to need to lose this tRNA. But I need to keep that amino acid. Oh, thank you. Okay, <laughs> I need to keep that amino acid. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a bond between those two amino acids that we want to keep. We're going to get rid of that tRNA. It's going to be recycled. It's going to go grab another amino acid uh, that you got every time you eat a protein. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to plug my computer in while I'm talking about this. But every time you eat protein, uh, you use the amino acids of that protein. You break them down and then you reuse them. So these tRNAs are actually going to grab those amino acids that you eat and that you've broken down, and then it's going to use those to rebuild new proteins inside you. There we go. Now I'm charging. Okay. So again, we're going to keep sliding down. I got to add another tRNA, which again the anticodon matches the codon and brings another amino acid. Slides down. Okay. We're going to get rid of the tRNA. We add our base. New tRNA comes in. The process continues, and so on and so forth. Okay. All right, now we get to the end. The end, at the end, the amino acid, excuse me, the codon at the end is known as a stop codon, and this is step four. The stop codon does not bring a tRNA with an amino acid. Okay, There's nothing added at this point. So the RNA is just going to finish what it's doing, and it's going to complete this protein by getting rid of the tRNA, and then the ribosome breaks apart. So now I've got my completed protein up here with its five amino acids, and then my mRNA with its six codons down here. Remember the start codon and the ending codon. Okay. Now that protein is going to be, there, the function of that protein is determined by two things. One, the types of amino acid that it make it up, and then the shape that it makes. And now whatever its shape is will determine its function. If it has uh, you know, this shape, then that means you're going to have brown eyes, but if it has this shape, that means you have blue eyes. Okay. So the shape of the protein, and remember we're talking about three-dimensional shapes. Now they're obviously not just simple as like triangles and squares. Okay. We're talking about big conv convoluted three-dimensional shapes. So you can imagine that if I just change even one nucleotide, I could, in reality, possibly change the shape of this protein. And if I change the shape of the protein, then that changes the function of the protein. And this is known as the mutations. The mutation in the DNA, just that one change, is what is eventually going to change uh, the outcome of that protein and then the function of the protein and possibly even physical characteristics of the individual. Okay? But again, that's, trans uh, that's translation in a, nuts a nutshell. Okay, uh, I know it says tra transcription here. It should say translation. I apologize for that. So make sure you know the steps of translation, the functions of the RNA during translation, and then how to use that codon chart. Okay, those three main ideas. There's a really good animation down here at the bottom. Feel free to visit the blog. There's lots of good information there as well. MrKabuski.wordpress.com or email me if you have any questions. jkabuski at gocathedral.com. Have a great day and keep making those proteins. Ah.